We're wrapping up our year in review. It's December 29th, 2023, and these are your headlines. Last year, Texas Scorecard reported on more than a dozen bad apples. By that, I mean teachers and other school employees charged with a variety of sex crimes involving students. In 2023, unfortunately, the number of educator sex crime stories exploded. Often, police charged multiple educators a week or even a day with crimes including sex with students, that's referred to in state law as improper relationships, sexual assault of children, soliciting sex with minors or prostitutes, possessing and distributing child sex abuse material, commonly known as child pornography. These bad apples represent a tiny fraction of Texas educators, yet schools are still failing to protect children from those predators. Unfortunately, uh, under Texas law, it's a crime for any public or private school employee to engage in sexual contact with a student or solicit, solicit sexual activity with a student using the internet or other electronic messaging. Now, defined in law, an improper relationship between an educator and a student is a second degree felony. That's punishable by two to 20 years in prison. The criminal misconduct also violates, by the way, the Texas Educators Code of Ethics, as it should, which says educators shall not solicit or engage in sexual conduct or a romantic relationship with a student or minor. It also prohibits inappropriate communications between educators and students or minors. Ethics violations are grounds for educators to lose their state teaching certification. Also this past year, we've seen a record-breaking number after record-breaking number from the southwest border of illegal crossings as President Joe Biden's border crisis continues. Yet citizens are still having to demand elected lawmakers here in Texas secure the border. Last week, a new record was set for how many illegal aliens were encountered in one day it was nearly 15,000. The previous record, 12,000, had been set only two weeks previously. The closing of federal fiscal year 2023 saw another record-breaking tally of 2,475,669 encounters with illegal aliens along the southwest border. However, the previous record was only from the year prior, when CBP encountered just under that at 2,378,000 illegal border crossers. In addition to just those sheer numbers, and by the way, that's the number of encounters, there's also gotaways, known gotaways and unknown gotaways, the, the number could be millions more. But in addition to just those sheer numbers, the total number of FBI terror watch list suspects, suspects arrested along the southwest border in federal fiscal year 2023 was 169. That's more than the previous six years combined. Meanwhile, Americans are dead after a human smuggler attempted to evade police with a car full of illegal border crossers. That happened this year as well. Despite the dangers, the Biden administration has focused on directing Border Patrol agents to use illegal aliens' preferred pronouns, coordinating mass swims across the Rio Grande into Texas. Now, the state has attempted to slow the deluge in various ways, including through border barriers such as wire fencing and buoys, but that's being challenged in court by the Biden administration. Governor Abbott also created a busing program to send illegal aliens to sanctuary cities across the U.S., drawing considerable ire from Democrat mayors, but also criticism from conservatives in that case as well for shepherding them further into the country. Now, let's go to the Texas legislature. After slow walking border security legislation for months, lawmakers finally passed legislation recently that creates a state crime for entering Texas illegally. That happened earlier this month. However, like everything else, the new measure is being challenged in court by the ACLU. If you're not watching The Luke Messias Show, then you are not as engaged as everybody else is in Texas who's trying to make a difference, knowing exactly what's going on so that they can take action on the things that really matter. Guys, watch us on the Roku app for Texas Scorecard. Watch us on YouTube. Listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Get engaged, get more informed, so together we can actually make a bigger difference on things that matter for the future of Texas. God bless you. Heading into 2023, Capitol observers expected lawmakers to grapple with issues like school choice, protecting children, border security. Few, if any, would have expected the state's recently re-elected attorney general to be impeached by the Texas House with less than 48 hours notice. And yet, that's exactly what happened. 
The process for Attorney General Ken Paxton's impeachment began in March of this year when the House General Investigating Committee tasked a group of investigators with looking into Paxton. Their report largely rehashed the ongoing indictment of Paxton on securities fraud charges that has been likened to a political prosecution for eight years now and has been the focus of multiple political campaigns against him. The main focus of the investigators' report was a settlement reached with four former employees of the Office of the Attorney General who said that they were fired unfairly. In October of 2020, eight of the AG's top aides accused him of bribery and abuse of office. After being terminated from employment, four of those employees filed the whistleblower lawsuit. They alleged that Paxton did political favors for Nate Paul, a real estate developer and donor, by having his office intervene in his legal disputes. Just days after that report was presented to the committee, the House met on a Saturday over Memorial Day weekend and voted 121 to 23 to impeach Paxton on 20 charges of misapplication of public resources, bribery, obstruction of justice, uh, abuse of public trust, and disregard of official duties. That was 61 Democrats and 60 Republicans supporting the impeachment, including, by the way, Speaker Dade Phelan. With that rushed vote, the issue was then sent over to the Senate. And for nine days, the Senate held a trial to determine whether to convict Paxton. And when the case was finally presented, it crumbled under the lightest scrutiny. One whistleblower, for example, maybe you remember this, Ryan Vassar, he admitted to having no evidence when reporting Paxton to the FBI. Another, David Maxwell, said he made claims to House investigators and didn't know whether they were true or not. The defense also noted that some of the whistleblowers refused to investigate the FBI, saying it would be insane to do so. When the vote was taken, Paxton was acquitted on all charges by the Senate. While 21 votes, or two-thirds, were required to convict and remove him from office on any one of those charges, none received even a majority vote. Well, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick had strong words for the House after the trial who brought the charges forward. He said millions of taxpayer dollars had been wasted on the impeachment. 31 senators and a large Senate staff made this trial possible, put their family, life, jobs, and businesses on hold for three months after being here already from January to June. To that end, Patrick requested an audit of both chambers' expenses. To date, the House has not provided their impeachment costs in that audit. Following the acquittal, the Republican Party of Texas condemned the impeachment and called on Speaker Phelan to resign. Paxton, meanwhile, has set his sights on the upcoming primary election, endorsing challengers to Republican House members who supported his impeachment. In addition to endorsing candidates, Paxton also says he'll be touring the state in support of these challengers to incumbents he says are some of the most liberal Republican politicians in the nation. With the Republican primary election on March 5th, 2024, those members will have to answer to their voters. I hope everybody has a happy new year and you can check out these stories at texasscorecard.com.